So today we're going to continue with calorimetry, okay? And we're going to use calorimetry to determine, or we're going to we're going to look at how we can use calorimetry to determine the enthalpy change of neutralization, okay? Before we do that, let's define the term enthalpy change of neutralization. Right? Enthalpy change of neutralization. So the enthalpy change of neutralization is defined as the following, right? It is it is the enthalpy change. Okay. Um, the symbol that we use for this is delta H subscript neutralization, or sometimes you just see N E U T, right? This is defined as the enthalpy change when an acid is neutralized, an acid is neutralized, okay, by an alkali, acid is neutralized by an alkali or by a base, all right, to give one mole of water, to give one mole of water. Right. Or you can say it the other way around. It's the enthalpy change when an alkali or a base is neutralized by an acid to give one mole of water. Delta H neutralization is also an exothermic process. Okay. So neutralization will release heat. Okay, or will release energy in the form of heat. What you guys should be aware of is that the delta H neutralization, okay, the delta H neutralization is less exothermic is less exothermic for weak acids okay versus versus strong acids okay it's less exothermic for weak acids than it is for than it is for strong acids and the reason why is because so the reason why this is the case okay the reason why it's less exothermic for weak acids is because is because energy is needed okay energy is needed for okay or additional energy is needed Additional energy is needed. Okay. Is needed for dissociation. Okay, dissociation, or we can say ionization. Okay, of weak acids, right? Since they don't ionize completely in solution, additional energy is needed, which means that overall. The energy released from the overall process is not as much as it would be for a strong acid. This also explains, okay, because additional energy is needed for the dissociation or ionization of weak acids, okay, it explains why its neutralization is less exothermic. It also explains why um, weak acids react slower than, okay, weak acids will react slower than, will react slower than the strong acids, okay, because because again, um, you would need energy to dissociate higher activation energy, which would mean that slower rate of reaction. Okay. So we can say that for the same concentration of acid, if we had let, let's say one mole per dm cube ethanoic acid versus one mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid, ultimately all of the weak acid would react, but it would react at a slower rate. Okay, so the rate of reaction for weak acids is slower. Obviously, concentration is being kept constant because we want to compare what effect strength has, right? If we if we if we vary the concentration, that concentration will also have an yeah concentration will also have an effect on the rate, right? We don't want to do that. We just want to we just want to um, determine the effect of acid strength on rate and not the effect of concentration. So we control the concentration. So when we're talking about the enthalpy change of neutralization, okay, we're specifically looking at we're specifically looking at this reaction, okay? It is the neutralization reaction between H plus and OH minus to give us H2O, okay? And the delta H for this reaction is exothermic, okay? It's negative, all right? Now, uh, if it was a strong acid, like a monoprotic acid, so for example, if you were comparing, let's say, um, you know, it would be the same, for example, for, you know, things like HNO3 and HCl, for example, right? Um, right, because they're both strong, strong monoprotic acids, right? So in both cases, you have complete ionization of H plus, right? And that's neutralized by OH minus to give you H2, okay? So the enthalpy chain of neutralization for HNO3 would be the same as that for HCl, okay? Whereas for weaker acids, it would be, it would be uh, 
um, less exothermic, all right? And it could vary for different weak acids, it'll vary, right? Because weak acids can be different in to what extent they dissociate, right? Strong acids, we can assume that all of them ionize completely, but for weak acids, some will dissociate less or more than others, okay? So, but for strong acids, if you're, if you're just comparing monoprotic acids, those are acids with a single proton, right? Like something like nitric acid and HCl, it'll be the same for both, okay? Because you have the same ionic equation and you have complete ionization in both. So now we're going to look at how we can calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization using calorimetry, okay? So here's a question which says, 75 centimeter cube of 2 mole per decimeter cube ethanoic acid were placed in a plastic cup. The temperature was 18.2 degrees Celsius. To this were added 75 centimeter cube of 2 mole per decimeter cube ammonium hydroxide, whose temperature was 18.6 degrees Celsius. After mixing, the highest temperature was 31 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization for this process. The first thing we do here is we would write down the equation, okay, for the reaction between, for the reaction between ethanoic acid and ammonium hydroxide. We have CH3CO2H reacting with ammonium hydroxide, okay, and the products that we have are ammonium ethanoate, that's CH3CO2 minus NH4 plus, right, and we have H2O, and this is a balanced equation, this equation is balanced, right, now we know that the number of moles of ethanoic acid is concentration times volume, right, the concentration that we have is 2 moles per decimeter cube, the volume in decimeter cube is 75 divided by 1000, right, again we're converting from cm cube to dm cube, which means that we have 0 0.150 moles of 0 0.150 moles of ethanoic acid, right? And obviously we have the same concentration and volume of ammonium hydroxide, right? We have the same concentration and volume for ammonium hydroxide, which means we have the same number of moles of ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so they're reacting in exact amounts. 0.15 moles of this is reacting with 0.15. So that means that we're making, right? We're making 0 0.15 moles of water, right? 150 moles of water are being produced in this neutralization reaction, right? Because they react in a one-to-one -one ratio, right? And for every one mole of these that react, you make one mole of water, okay? So, this energy released that we're going to calculate is for, is for when 0.15 moles of water are produced. The enthalpy of neutralization is the enthalpy change if one mole of water was produced. And other thing that we're assuming here is that the water being produced by this reaction is not affecting the volume of the, is not affecting the overall volume of the solution, right? So this is the water produced by the system, whereas the water that we have in solution is the surroundings, right? So we're assuming that when, when this reaction takes place, right, it releases heat and it's heating up how many cm cube of water in the surroundings? 100 and 50 cm cube. Okay, we're assuming that this water being produced is not affecting the is not affecting the volume of water. So now we can calculate, we can calculate the heat released in this experiment, right? We have Q is equal to MC delta T, right? Again, what we, what we have over here is what we have over here is we have a neutralization reaction. We have a neutralization reaction taking place, right? And the surroundings where we're measuring the temperature change is the, is the solution, right? So that's the water in which the reaction is taking place. So when we mix the two, when we mix the two solutions together, right? When we mix the two solutions together, our mass of water is 150 grams, right? Because that's just, we have 150 cm cube of water, right? And one cm cube of water just weighs one gram. So the mass is 150 grams, right? The specific heat capacity is obviously just 4.18, right? Here again, we're assuming one thing is that the specific heat capacity for the solution is the same as that for pure water. So I'll repeat this. We're mixing 75 cm cube of this solution with 75 cm cube of this solution, right? So our overall, the final solution in which the reaction takes place is 150 cm cube. Okay, that's the water, the solvent in which the reaction is taking place. Over here, okay, when we mix these two solutions together, we get 150 cm cube solution, all right? We're assuming 
we're, we're, we're assuming that if we have 150 cm cube of solution, we're taking that to be 150 cm cube of water, right? We're ignoring the concentration due to the solute, okay? So we're assuming that we have 150 cm cube of water in which this reaction is taking place, which means we have 150 grams of water, right? We're also assuming that the specific heat capacity for this solution is the same as that of water, okay? Because it's going to be slightly different, so we're assuming it to be the same. Now over here, we can say that the initial temperature was 18.4 degrees Celsius, right? Because you're mixing two solutions with equal volumes, right? One has a temperature of 18.2, the other has a temperature of 18.6. So we just take the average, right? And the final temperature was 31.0 degrees Celsius, which means that the delta T is equal to 12.6 degrees Celsius, okay? So now we can calculate Q, right? Q is equal to MC delta T. Here, the mass of water is 150 grams, again, we're assuming that the mass of solution and mass of water are the same thing, okay? Then we have, uh, or sorry, we're assuming that the volume of solution and volume of water are the same thing, right? The specific heat capacity is 4.18 and change in temperature is 12.6. So Q comes out to, Q comes out to 7900.2 joules, right? And this in kilojoules is simply 7.9002 joules per kilojoules, right? So this is the, this is the heat. This is the heat taken in by the solution by the surrounding water in kilojoules, right? So what I can say is that in this reaction, we can say that 0 0.15 moles of water, when when 0 0.15 moles of water were formed in the neutralization reaction, they released negative. Right, negative 7.9 kilojoules was the enthalpy change, right, for 0.15 moles of water being formed. So, what is the energy change or what is the enthalpy change if one mole of water had been produced? That is the enthalpy change of neutralization. So, here if you cross multiply, you'll get the enthalpy change of neutralization is equal to negative 52.7 kilojoules per mole negative 52.7 kilojoules per mole, all right? You can also just use this, you can also just use the idea that the enthalpy change of neutralization is equal to minus Q over N, right? Here, heat is being released into the surroundings, the temperature of the surroundings is increasing, that's your solution, right? Which means that the system is releasing heat, so it's exothermic. The heat released, this is for 0.15 moles of water, being produced, so one mole produces how much, right? That's your enthalpy of neutralization. So we can say that the enthalpy of neutralization is minus Q, right? Where Q is in kilojoules, divided by N, okay? Minus Q divided by N. So N is the number of moles of, N is the number of moles of water produced in the neutralization, okay? N is the number of moles of water produced in the neutralization, and then the delta H neutralization, of course, will be in kilojoules per mole. All right, so for combustion, N was the number of moles of fuel, whereas for neutralization, N is the number of moles of water produced in the neutralization reaction. So now let's look at the next question that we have, okay? The next question is not neutralization, rather it's a reaction of a metal with an acid. Okay, it says that 0 0.48 grams of magnesium ribbon was added to 200 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid in a plastic beaker. The temperature at the start was 20 degrees Celsius and after the magnesium ribbon had dissolved, the temperature rose to 21.2 degrees Celsius. Write an equation for the reaction of magnesium with dilute hydrochloric acid and then calculate the delta H for this reaction. So over here we have a reactive metal, right, reacting with an acid, so we have magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid to form salt, magnesium chloride, and hydrogen gas, right? We have to balance this equation, we're gonna have 2HCl. Now we have to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction, okay? Now when you have to calculate the enthalpy change for a particular reaction, you should calculate for the reaction as it's shown, okay? So what that means is, 
So when we're going to calculate the enthalpy change of this reaction, we're going to calculate it for one mole of magnesium reacting with acid. In other words, what would have been the energy released if one mole of magnesium had reacted with, again, since the reaction is showing the reaction of one mole of magnesium, okay, we're going to figure out the enthalpy change if one mole of magnesium had reacted, right? Again, you guys should know that for enthalpy changes, the enthalpy change of a reaction, okay, when we're talking about enthalpy changes of reactions, the coefficients in the equation represent the actual amounts in moles, right? So here, we're going to talk about the enthalpy change for one mole of magnesium reacting, okay, because, because in the equation shown, we've shown the coefficient of magnesium to be one. So we're showing one mole of magnesium reacting with two moles of HCl. So let's first figure out the number of moles of magnesium, right? The number of moles of magnesium is just the mass divided by the molar mass. In this case, the atomic mass is 24.3. We have 0 0.48 divided by 24.3. So this comes out to 0 0.0198 moles of magnesium, okay? So that's the number of moles of magnesium that we have. So, so we know that a certain amount of energy is being released when 0 0.0198 moles of magnesium reacts. We want to figure out how much energy would have been released had one mole of magnesium reacted. So first we're going to figure out how much heat was released, right? The heat released is simply Q is equal to mc delta T, right? The mass of water, right, is the mass of the solution over here that's being, for which the temperature is increasing. That's 200 centimeter cube of solution. So we're assuming that's water. Right, so we have 200 cm cube of water, which is 200 grams, right? Again, this water is one gram per centimeter cube. It has a density of one gram per centimeter cube. Right, the specific heat capacity is 4.18, and then the change in temperature is 1.2 degrees Celsius, right? So this comes out to 1,003, 1,003.2 joules. So in kilojoules, that is 1.0032 kilojoules. Okay, so that's how many kilojoules of energy were released. That's how many kilojoules of energy were released when this many moles of magnesium reacted. So we can say that we can say that 0 0.0198 moles of magnesium reacting. 0 0.0198 moles of magnesium reacting released 1.0032 kilojoules. That is the enthalpy change is obviously negative, right? Because the solution or the surroundings, the temperature is increasing. Right? Q is positive, delta H is negative. So this is the energy released when this many moles of magnesium reacted. So for the reaction shown, we have one mole of magnesium. So what is the enthalpy change when one mole of magnesium reacts? So over here, if you cross multiply, you get the enthalpy change as negative 50.7 kilojoules per mole. So that's the answer.